Okay, tonight we're also going to look at some tools that we can use to diagnose problems on hard disks to you know, provide maintenance and troubleshooting techniques. You can use Windows Explorer. We'll get to a drive this way. And in Windows Explorer you can right click on any drive letter. In this case here's an NTFS partition and get information about it. This is an NTFS file system. Here's the amount of view space. Here's the amount of free space that I have. And this will give me access to several tools that can compress the drive. All of these are NTFS features. Um, if I wanted to do any error checking, here I could check the drive and close that. And then in this case, it's a mounted drive. I, I would need to unmount it to complete CHK DSK or check disk on it. But that's I could launch it from here if it were an unmounted drive. If I need to defragment the drive, here I could do an analysis. I'll just do a real quick analysis on drive D. And we'll go ahead and let it look and see if it needs to defragment. It's telling me that I, I don't have a lot of space here. And when you defrag a drive, you're going to need a good amount of, of free space. In this case, Windows recommends at least 15% usable space. Um, Do that partition. Uh, we'll try. We'll try least, uh, XP. Here we go. Yeah, and we can see I've <coughs> got a decent amount of fragmentation here. So I would go ahead and start the defragmentation process. What happens is as you install and uninstall applications, create, and then delete files, they're not always written contiguously on the platters on the hard drive. And over time, you know, a file may be distributed across different clusters, different sections of the platters in a hard drive, and it slows down the read process and the write process when reading that file from the drive or writing information to that file or um, that directory. So in this case, we can take all of those files and we can make them contiguous. That's the idea behind defragmenting the drive. We want to string them together in a contiguous fashion and that makes them you know, a lot more efficient in terms of reading and writing. So if they're all in one spot, then I don't have to spend halfway across the platter to access bits and pieces that are all part of the same file structure. I've got them all in a contiguous location, that is one spot, and it just makes everything a lot more efficient. I'm going to go ahead and stop that. I won't wait all night for that, but um, you know, depending on how large the drive is and how fragmented and how much data you have, it could take a, a good amount of time. Of course, there's everyone has probably used NT Backup EXE. You can launch it here from this menu, and it runs in a wizard mode. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the wizard mode. I'll cancel it, and then also you can launch it from a command prompt. And now that I turn the wizard mode off, this will let you make, you know, pretty good backups. If you've read through chapters uh, 9, 10, 11 in your book, you've probably gone over incremental backups and differential backups and normal backups. Most companies will usually end up doing a complete backup on a day that's not really busy, maybe on the weekend or a Sunday or something. Not many people are there at the office. Um, they'll do at least one normal backup a week and then they will follow it up with incremental or differential backups during the weekdays just to save time in the whole backup process. But you want to make sure that you back up any data that's changed on a daily basis and you want to make sure you have a pretty recent complete normal backup of your entire system in case something were to go wrong. If I were going to back up a file we'll just back up something really small here do a whole partition. Let's say we were going to back up our cakewalk projects. And let's make a folder for this. I burn my backups in DVD or I put them on a removable drive, but if you had an old tape drive that would work with this utility, um, you know, the, the, the media is up to you. It's your choice. Common technique a lot of people use instead of tape drives now is they'll use some type of high speed removable hard drive, firewire, USB 2, and they'll just keep it in a fire safe or store it in a you know, location off-site. Um, call that 
fake walk. Alright, I wanna plug the one to back that up. We'll go ahead and start the backup process. Now in this case, shadow copy is kind of a neat feature in XP and Vista in 2003. Um, some files are locked, and so they can't, you know, if it were not for shadow copy, they could not be copied in the backup process. What shadow copy does is, if any of those files are locked and currently in use, then it simply makes a, a quick temporary copy of it and copies that in the backup. So you do have a complete backup, you know, without having to actually shut those applications or services down. So I backed up that folder. now. That's not going to be very large. If I wanted to back up my entire system, I need to at least back up the system state data right here. System state data has got my registry and, and all the important files I would need to restore in the event that my registry became corrupt or you know some such thing like that. And then I could I would also choose to back up my maybe my XP partition, my Vista partition, um, my data partition if I wanted to. The I have two Linux partitions, and notice that they don't show up here. In this case, um, XP is, is, is not reading those partitions. Okay, um, let's go here, let's go to disk management. And disk management gives a similar view in this case. It's letting me know the partitions and file systems I have. If I wanted to, I could change a drive letter with any available drive letter that I have under disk management. Um, I can go through here and look at all of my different file systems, and how much space they are, and how much free space I have. Um, good, good place to manage things. Also, optionally, under XP or hard drive, you can set a system or store point. I've turned it off here. I don't really use restore points. Um, some people really like them. Uh, in my experience, they've created more trouble than they're worth. Uh, the reason is sometimes when you get infected with a virus or spyware, um, they can actually they'll be saved when you set a system restore point, and so you clean it off, and then for some reason you go back to a system restore point, and well, there's that virus all over again, or there's that spyware all over again. The other problem is if something physically happens to the drive, or if you get a really bad virus that severely corrupts your file system, such that you have to format and start over, your well your restore points aren't going to do any good at that point. So if you like using them that's fine, but I just I, I don't find them to be a reliable means of you know backing a system up. I, I would never trust a restore point as a backup because if anything happens to your system you, you know there's a, a, a very big chance you won't be able to res, you know use the restore point. Um, if the data is important to you you'd like you know you want to use a backup utility, NT backup or ghost or some such other utility um, you know, one of my favorites is, is I just like Ghost. I just like to image copy a system. Okay, um, let's look at some of the differences. We were talking about file system formats and some of the features that they give you. So, uh, in this case, partition G here, what's the letter G data is a NTFS partition. And I'm going to create a folder. We'll call it Secrets. And in this folder, we'll create some secrets. Era 51 and who really shot JFK? And top secret stealth. Oh, stealth right over. Let's say that I had some, you know, some files that they had some sensitive information. I didn't want any, you know, inappropriate person viewing that information. One of the nice features of NTFS is that I can click on secrets, and then if I click on the advanced tab, notice I have the option here to encrypt that folder. And let's guess I'll apply changes to the folder, subfolders, and files. And when I do, it's color coded. I, I've set it up under options and. I guess I should cover that 